Hello, today I would like to present you quite interesting military device. It is a MRP4 directional finder for radar station. Anti aircraft missile that is going to be a one vehicle. And next to that, you are going to have a radar station. And what that radar station is going to do, it is going to emit radio wave frequencies in the gigahertz range and they are going to send it into the air. And as the aircraft is going to be passing by, they are going to reflect that and is going to bounce back into the antenna and by Doppler and a lot of different mathematical computations you are going to get location of your target. So as you can see it is not a passive system and then when you've got like a stealth aircraft there are designed to reflect those waves in kind of way there it's not going to get back or it's going to get back as something totally different that is not going to be recognized as the enemy aircraft but the main focus point that your anti-aircraft battery it need to have a radar that is going to be sending those pulses and that of course can be also enabled for like a short period of time where they are trying to locate your enemy and this is what this device is intended to do it's intended to be carrying by soldier or to be mounted at vehicle and it's going to be receiving that pulses and you can detect and find a direction where that radar station is located mrp4 in a dismounted soldier configuration can be carried in that pouch and you can basically attach it on to your chest and you've got a quick access to your device you can make all the adjustment here you've got your spare parts and this is the main device so let's take it out this is our main device and as you can see your focus most likely go toward that element and it's hiding beneath directional antenna that is going to be detecting the gigahertz signals you've got the high band antenna which from the wavelength standpoint of view is of course smaller and the low band antenna with a larger diameter and you've got a not electromagnetic blocking material most likely some sort of bakelite or different plastic and it's creating a window to pick up our signals and basically where you are wearing it on your chest attached to those belt then the direction where you are facing you are going to be picking up the signals and you can tell where your radar station is located if you take a look at the front panel you can clearly see that something is missing and it is a key component of your scale and since it is a mechanical instrument it's going to be hidden in extremely safe way in that box and you are going to take it out your scale is safe in that compartment and as you can see you've got a spare one so if there will be any problem we've got a shock absorbing mat you are going to grab it and insert into that spot here under D1 we've got a holder for our detector diode and you are going to unscrew it in exactly the same way as like a fuse holder and you are going to insert then your detector diode as you can see it is extremely close to like a fuse holder you insert your detector diode and you screw it in there is another one for a different band and on back we've got another tool 
the diodes looks like this. They are in a tiny lead container, each of them is packed, and that is going to 100% protecting you from EMP, so if there will be a nuclear attack, it is totally shielded, you are just going to cut it with your knife and pull out the diode and insert it into the holder and your device is going to be operational even after having a really really bad day. Then you need to supply your device with power. You are going to undo that screw and select proper device. I've got over here mounted a battery adapter and it's going to be accepting power through those terminals. This is how it looks like and it go out in that terminals that are going to be matching our device. You can see we've got like a gold pins and you can swap it with just a nickel cadmium battery. It looks like this, this is just a regular rechargeable battery and you can mount it in like that and secure or what is like a more modern way it is using that adapter that you can insert it over there so let me let me insert it the correct way you go like this then you grab this battery holder and it's going to be using standard R20 battery and it gives you similar output to the one you seen there. So let me show you how that looks like. You are going to just grab a single use civilian battery and you are going to be populating that box. Here is going to be one terminal. And after you populate it, you insert it like this and you can carry it via that strap. Then you grab your 12 volt cable and one end goes here and the second one and go into the device and now you can use it for a much longer time from a regular batteries. If you've got on hand 12 volt power source, then you can use that type of cable that is giving you a banana plug with a positive and negative lead and it go into the same port. You have to remind this is for a 12 volt systems only. So this is how it presents and the cable is called KVZ. Here we've got the different label and this is how it presents. If we go with a route of using rechargeable nickel cadmium batteries, then of course we need a charger and the charger looks like this and it is very universal because it is going to accept a standard AC input and also 24 volt DC from military vehicle installation and you are going to put exactly the same meter that you've got for your device into that spot. Here you can put your meter to get reading whether you are recharging and then you are going to slide your rechargeable battery and now you can recharge it that way. There is also one interesting thing with the battery. Over there you've got a small tweezers that are, they are designed to help you out with replacing the diode. Just imagine that your diode was broken and didn't came out. Then you can grab those tweezers, you can squeeze it and you can pull it out. It is designed for that special purpose. Let's go back to our front panel. Here we've got our audio output that is critical for finding correct frequency. So you are going to grab speaker like this. Yes, it is a tiny speaker that you can clip anywhere. 
and it's got this quite interesting plug and you are going to attach it like this and now you can operate your device if you need to be quiet if you need to have like a sound sensitive environment then you can use a earpiece that is going to be attached exactly into the same port now we can go back and see how all the knobs are working this is the most important knob we've got v as off then we've got the b for battery check and we are going to get indication in that small area then we've got a impulse count that can be reset with pressing that button from the beaming of our radar then we've got our frequency range the 500 1000 5000 that device can be detecting signals from a uh, 1 gigahertz up to 10 gigahertz and it is divided through a different range then we've got that button that is going to illuminate our scale and we've got also that one and it is our amplifier so you can try to select what kind of signals do you want to pick up do you want to go for a very low or just a high power this device is extremely simple this is not a radio receiver that you might use for demodulating something so it's not going to decode any audio that you can hear like the fm modulation or am it is designed only to detect those pulses so you've got a test tool for trying that and inside you are going to put r20 battery and you are going to press that button and what i believe inside is going to be like a relay that is going to be constantly clicking and creating sparks and those rf signals are going to be picked up by that device and you can check all bands in case you do not pick up anything then you would need to swap one of those diodes so how to operate this device extremely quickly first you go into the b and you check your battery level then you select the tone repeat frequency from 500 1000 5000 then you select the band and the number one is the widest and you are going to play with the amplifier to get rid of unwanted noise and just grab the correct signal if you've got trouble with seeing your scale then you are going to press that button that is going to illuminate it to measure the radar repeat frequency you are going to of course put your earpiece and you are going to press that button and it's going to inject audio tone from your local generator and display it on that scale and while pressing that you are going to be trying finding exactly the same here frequency and when they both match you are going to read it from the scale it is that simple if it's not on that scale you are going to be try the other one we are going to try to match them to sound exactly the same and then you made out your readout so as you were able to see it is extremely nice collection piece but of course nowadays it is obsolete so thank you very much for watching i hope you find that interesting see you next time and bye bye